Have you ever wished that someone would tell you step by step exactly what you do with a client? Or have you ever wondered if there are predictable ways to do consulting that will help you guarantee the results that you promise? If so, this is the video that you've been waiting for. Up until now, we've set the vision for how a consultant should be positioned with a client and the components of a compelling offer. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is going over the consulting engagement cycle, which is the step-by-step -step approach that enables you to apply your expertise in a consultative manner. When you apply your expertise in a consultative manner, you will do several things. First, ensure you stay out of the surrogate leader or pair of hands trap. Ensure that you also stay out of the methodology trap. Test to make sure that your expertise is relevant to the client situation and that the client is ready for what you have to offer. It also allows you to provide higher value options that commands higher fees. It gives you a means to guarantee your results and it helps you know exactly what to do every time with a client. So each aspect of the consulting engagement cycle will be broken down into additional step-by-step -step detail throughout the entire consultant's toolbox. I want you to have the peace of mind of knowing exactly what you need to do. So please review the course descriptions for additional information. But for now, let me give you an overview of the five stages of the, five, of the consulting engagement cycle. So let's jump in. The first phase is partnership setup or contracting, which I'm calling establishing winning partnerships. This phase is more than how you transform a prospect to a buyer, although that's a part of it. This phase is about creating a solid relationship before any other work gets done. It's more than writing a proposal. It's about establishing trust and creating a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. And without it, your clients are simply not going to put your recommendations into action. Mastering partnership setup is the number one critical success factor that will enable you to close more business for more strategic projects at higher price points. The second phase is assessments. Many consultants skip this phase, and when they do, they will inevitably fall into either the surrogate leadership or the pair of hands trap. The assessment is what provides your, you your independent point of view. It allows you to verify the gap between today and the desired future state and the real causes behind those gaps. Every time I'm tempted to skip or shorten the step, I get reminded of why it's so important. Clients rarely have an understanding of the root causes to their challenges because they're too close. An assessment is a high value deliverable in itself for two reasons. It allows you to pinpoint and frame challenges for your clients and the process itself creates the upfront buy-in because of the involvement of the employees and leaders and other key constituents. It gives you and your client the foundation for creating future business cases for additional work. The third phase and the fourth phase are solution design and delivery. These steps are all about creating the processes, tools, coalitions, etc. to solve organizational issues. The key to, is to select the right interventions for the right situations and to design an approach that balances effectiveness and efficiency. As a consultant, the wider you master your different available solutions, the more you can offer your clients, the stronger value you can create, and obviously the compensation flows from there. Finally, the fifth phase is measuring results. It's critical to measure the result of your intervention. If you want to leave a company in a better place and a place to continuously improve and a culture of continuous improvement, setting up a system to track and evaluate results is critical for them. And it's critical for you. It's important for you to be able to establish a track record for yourself so you can show that what you promise you do deliver. So now you know the phases, here's what you do next. So are you working for your company and you think, you know what, I'd love to go out on my own and have my own consulting practice? If so, start now to leverage your expertise in a consultative manner using the consulting engagement cycle. So when you're responding to a request, think through how you might start using these steps as a new way of doing your work. And if you already have a consulting practice and you want to grow, identify which aspects of the consulting engagement cycle you could start working on. It, can you improve your ability to establish stronger partnerships? Do you skip the assessment phase? And do you do it because you never knew that you should do an assessment? Or is it that you just don't have the skills? Or is your toolbox not as wide as you wish it could be as it relates to the different solutions and interventions that you can offer? If any of those are opportunities for you, please check out the other courses we have in the consultant's toolbox. I will be providing you step by step exactly what you need to do in any one of those scenarios so that you will have the peace of mind every time that you will know exactly what you need to do for anything a client might throw your way. So now we've completed part two of Organizational Consulting 101. So let's recap what we've learned so far. We've learned in part one that there is a definitive market needs for consultants. And the second thing that we learned in part two is how to position ourselves as consultants. 
In the third part, we're going to go into what I'm calling the white space of the organization. I'm not going to define it here because I want to just pique your interest. So join me in the next part and I look forward to seeing you there.